Good evening, guys. Welcome back to another episode of Not So Late Night Show. And uh, if you guys have watched last week's installment, uh, we featured Malayan Banking Bahad. Of course, once we get started talking about banks, naturally, uh, the other requests coming from the other banks will come. Right. So as of now, I think the latest one after Malayan Banking was actually Public Bank. But of course, from the comment section, we also noted that other bankings are actually being stated and requested as well. So what more better than to actually continue uh, this kind of momentum by going into another, I would say, popular bank uh, listed in our Malaysia Stock Exchange, uh, Public Bank Bahad. So of course, it's well known for being a very protective and well-capitalized uh, bank. But does that mean that that, that, that equals to a better investment opportunity. So as always, the disclaimer set up straight up front before we talk about any stocks. Uh, just take it as uh, some kind of information, engage, and uh, do not take it as a buy, sell, or hold decision, right? Uh, and if you are interested and, and, and feeling excited about the stock, please do, do your due diligence and study it further, right? I'll pass it to Chun Beng. Uh, what is so great about public bank and uh, what are the business models and the prospect about it. Yeah. So I think uh, Public Bank is actually one of the legendary bank with great, great, very great, uh, I was, that's why I call it very great performance uh, since they have actually listed in uh, the stock exchange. Uh, it has been going up trend, but of course, uh, for new, uh, I mean, for people who is new into invest, investing, uh, new into investing, uh, they might find it, uh, this is some stock that only interests uh, the elder generation. Uh, is it true? So this is the reason why we wanted to cover everything about public bank Berhats and you can make a call after our sharing. So nevertheless, uh, this is a bank with, I mean, a long history. So it's founded by Tan Sri Dato Sri Dr. Tae Hong Piao uh, in 1966. And then one year later, they actually uh, listed in Kuala Lumpur Stock Exchange. Subsequently, it got actually uh, renamed into Busa, lah, right? And then uh, they are technically the top fourth, I mean, the fourth top brand, uh, brand in ASEAN. Uh, so it's a very popular bank, lah, uh, particular, particularly uh, popular in the Chinese uh, scenes. Uh, I mean, a lot of Chinese people tend to actually have a public bank account. Uh, I mean, on top of the default bank, either uh, Maybank or CME Bank, right? So uh, actually, when we wanted to share about public bank, uh, it's kind of uh, quite straightforward uh, because majority of their income actually come from the banking services. Uh, and of course, other than that, uh, they also park public mutuals uh, under uh, their entire business portfolio, uh, which, is a which is an unit uh, trust uh, investments uh, platform. Uh, a little bit different uh, if you compare with Maybank, uh, the insurance arm is actually listed as another entity, uh, not under public bank for HUD. So some of the key uh, steps as of uh, last year, uh, of course, they are one of the largest bank in Malaysia. Uh, if you compare about the total asset, they are the third largest. And then if you talk about market capitalization, usually we call it as market cap, uh, they are the second largest in Bursa. And I mean, uh, the entire 40, 54 year of operation, they have unbroken uh, profitabilities of records. And one of the unique thing about private bank is if you compare it against other uh, peers or all their rivals, uh, they actually able to score the highest uh, net ROE or returns of equities. And of course, uh, another one that is great about them is they have the lowest cost to income ratio. And another part uh, on top of it is if you talk about impact, uh, loan ratio is very, very low. So uh, this is all the key things if you want to differentiate them with uh, Maybank or even CME Bank. So they are the very conservative bank, but take a step back. Conservative means uh, you can get stabilities. Uh, the entire profit is actually assured because of how they actually manage the company. And if you talk about the market share uh, loans, uh, they actually quite well spread. 
So if you talk about residential uh, properties, they are very careful in selection of cust customer. That's why right now they about, have about 20.1% uh, inter market shares uh, compared to uh, commercial properties, uh, they have higher. Uh, and then uh, they also have about close to 30% in uh, passenger vehicle financing. If you talk about private retail unit trust business, they also uh, have close to 33.4%. So this is where they are right now in terms of uh, the market share in Malaysia as of uh, last year. So uh, of course, majority of their operation or the services is actually located in Malaysia. So you can see uh, they have the investment bank, they have public mutual uh, offices, and also the, all the public bank branches uh, in Malaysia. Uh, other than that, they also have some operation uh, in Hong Kong. And if you talk about one single country that uh, they are putting the focus in, uh, other than Malaysia is actually Cambodia. So they got about uh, 31, uh, if you say as of March 2021. So this is quite straightforward, focusing in Malaysia and small portfolio actually put in uh, Cambodia. If you zoom into the uh, breakdown of their revenues, so you can see a uh, majority of their loan uh, actually come from these retail uh, operations. And of course, another than that, they have they are able to actually capture it from higher purchase, uh, corporate lending, and, and so on. Um, if you compare about the co the contribution between domestic and the international market, uh, no doubt, uh, uh, more than 90% is actually uh, in Malaysia, 90.9, while the rest actually contributed just about 9.7, uh, 9.1. So uh, a Malaysia-based company, and then of course, uh, if you zoom further into the PBTs and also to the asset, uh, the ratio actually follow. So uh, it's a very straightforward uh, company uh, where they are good at uh, doing the screenings of customer. That's why they have a very low impact loans, uh, which is they are very proud of. And then this pretty much sum up uh, everything about public bank. Uh, very straightforward. So uh, I will actually pass to Jupan to continue with uh, the financial information. All right. Thank you, Chunping. So I think uh, compared to um, other banks uh, out there, uh, the business model or the so-called revenue segment from public banks is pretty much straightforward, very strong in terms of retail or, or conventional uh, borrowing, and also uh, having a little bit of presence when it comes to their uh, non-interest income uh, contribution, which is uh, from the public mutual uh, segment as well. So, of course, uh, with the business model so straightforward, uh, it would be uh, more important to actually dive right into the financial info to actually see whether uh, are these uh, so-called segments still growing and present uh, some kind of assurance uh, to b investors like you and me to actually give uh, this bank uh, a thought as a candidate to invest in it, right? So before we go into the financial info, just a little shout out to uh, what we have actually been doing or kickstarted ever since uh, early of uh, 2020. So we launched a club uh, where inside this club membership, you're actually getting access to uh, a Facebook group, which, which is private. And now uh, we will talk about stocks inside there. Uh, and these stocks uh, will not just be stocks based in Malaysia, but also around the world, right? Talking about stocks uh, from the US, from Hong Kong, uh, even from European Union as well, even from Singapore as well. Like, if you dare to start the topic, then there will definitely be uh, comments and also opinions shared across this platform. Of course, uh, we also do uh, private sessions like this, uh, where we go deeper into certain companies and certain uh, mindsets of investing as well. And of course, those who have actually started their 2021 uh, investing journey by actually uh, our first uh, offering, which is Stock Plus, uh, we actually pick up 10 stocks that we are most confident in for the uh, entire year of 2021. So the same thing will be done for 2022, but this time around, it will be bundled with our premium club membership and of course there will also be premium articles and premium analysis as well right so this is just a snapshot of what uh, we have previously covered for our latest month's uh, pre private video investing about china and also uh private analysis uh, 
specific analysis on deep dive companies uh, like local companies and also companies listed on the US stock exchange. Now, of course, uh, investing is sometimes a bit more skewed towards certain themes and certain segments. Uh, we also do this kind of special thematic sharing. So we have just completed uh, episode two, which is semiconductor, and the one coming right up is going to revolve around e-commerce. So do check us out if you are interested. And uh, let's go through the financial numbers or figures by public bank Berhad. So you can see, of course, the dark red segment is actually the contribution coming from the uh, net interest income, basically how much money they borrow out to, uh, they lend out to the borrowers and then uh, charge them uh, an interest. So that portion is coming from uh, their borrowing business, right? Of course, there's also the uh, 12% contribution coming from Islamic banking businesses. So all in all total, the conventional banking plus the Islamic banking segment is giving around 74% uh, or 75% contribution. The net fee and commission income will uh, largely be contributed by their public mutual uh, business model. And that comes in at around 17%. And of course, they are smaller uh, and uh, more uh, less contributions coming from the so-called uh, gains from and losses from financial instruments and also the other operating income. So all in all, this is a bank that requires quite heavily on the conventional uh, borrowing and lending business, right? So um, of course, OPR will play a certain aspect on the performance of this bank, but do uh, be a little bit more rest assured that once any OPR uh, news comes up, uh, usually the banks will also uh, follow up with adjusting the base lending rate and also the interest rate for the savings and current accounts as well. So not to be too worried about that, even though it's a bank heavily relying on uh, the traditional uh, borrowing business. So of course, uh, one key aspect or one key KPI that investors would always want to gauge further when it comes to the borrowing business is the net interest margin. How much interest percentage uh, the bank is actually earning upright, by actually borrowing it out, lending up to someone and then earning the interest income and then giving uh, some portion of it for, you know, people who deposit money uh, uh, with a uh, public bank, right? So, of course, it has always been stable around 2%. Uh, it actually came down a bit uh, in Q2 uh, of 2020 uh, due to the fact that I think back then uh, they didn't actually they were able to keep up with the OPR uh, rate came in, coming down and down. Uh, and when the government tried to actually uh, stimulate uh, to come into some kind of protective measure uh, when the country was actually uh, struck heavily by COVID. But eventually, Come quarter three, quarter four, and even quarter one as of the latest quarter, uh, things have started to normalize in terms of the net interest margin. Right? So you are looking at a bank that has maybe uh, survived the worst uh, in terms of its uh, net interest margin trend, which happened just one year ago. And of course, uh, what made um, public banks so uh, well received or even uh, so enticing to investors is its uh, defensibility, its stability, and also uh, how they manage their asset quality, right? So one of the key parameters that you usually use to gauge uh, the asset quality of a bank is usually how much loans are uh, impact uh, or write off as bad debts, right? So you want a bank that, you know, continue to grow their loans, but they are actually lending it out to uh, creditable individuals that does not eventually default their loans and, and run away uh, with, 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 with their so-called debt and unable to pay back the debt, right? So one of the key ratios would be the gross impact loan. So we can see that uh, it has been coming down. Uh, even prior to COVID, it was at 0 0.49, but it came down even more to 0 0.36. And as of the latest uh, quarter, uh, of Q1 2021, it was at 0.35%. And this is significantly lower than the industry standard uh, set by all the banks in Malaysia, which currently is at 1.6%. So of course, you can see that uh, all their loans, uh, be it uh, to residential properties, commercial properties, even transport vehicles, uh, is always significantly lower than, than the industry standard of 1.6%. And it's still continuing to you know drop even lower signifying that um, even though it's already lesser and better 
best in class in terms of industry standards, they can still continue to you know tighten and, and improve it. So which is very impressive from that kind of perspective. And of course, uh, one of the key um, enticing factors of uh, investing in a bank is the uh, so-called generosity uh, of a bank when it comes to paying out dividends. So public bank, uh, together with some of the uh, more reputable banks in Malaysia, are actually kind dividend payers uh, every time when they report their earnings, right? So you can see uh, in terms of the total dividend paid uh, across a five-year trend is actually on an increasing trend, uh, save apart what happened in 2020 uh, because bank uh, performances were infected by the uh, pandemic. So uh, lesser profits and also lesser dividend payouts. But as I said again, if you are confident of public bank or the entire Malaysian banking scene to recover uh, from the 2020 uh, downfall uh, in terms of performance, most likely uh, a higher and a better performance will also translate into a better dividend payout. So in terms of dividend payout ratio also, uh, you can see that they are not uh, overpaying. They are actually maintaining, uh, as of latest, the two-year trend is around 50 plus percent. So if they are able to earn, say, for example, one ringgit in terms of uh, earnings per share, they're actually paying out uh, 52 cents of it as dividends to investors like you and me. So it's not too bad in terms of that track record and in terms of that uh, capital management, right? And of course, if you look at another key uh, KPI, uh, which is the return on equity, right? Most of investors also tend to look heavily at uh, the return on equity. You might actually uh, be a little bit surprised that it is on an downtrend. So uh, previously, the ROE ranges of around 20 plus percent, but over the years, it has been coming down. And uh, of course, this might actually uh, light up a potential red flag. How come uh, the ROE is actually falling? Whereas uh, in terms of profit wise, it's actually uh, in trend with the growing uh, revenue, even though at a slower growth rate. Right. If you look deeper and understand the mechanics or the mathematical equation of return of equity, uh, if your equity is actually increasing at a much higher rate than the net profit attributable to your shareholders, then under very normal circumstances, the ROE will actually be lower as well. So even though we see uh, profits to shareholders is increasing, but due to the fact that the bank is actually holding on uh, onto the uh, uh, retain profits as uh, the equity portion of an investor, uh, you can see that uh, the net asset value is actually increasing much faster than the profit. And hence, if you plot two graphs together, yes, ROE is on a downtrend, but in terms of net asset per unit, uh, it's actually trending at a very healthy and a very great kind of growth rate, right? So, of course, uh, there are going to be plenty of... Uh, ratios and numbers to actually gauge a bank. Uh, right here, you have a performance in a glance of all the so-called scary, scary numbers. But just to take you through the important one, as you can see, net profit has always been on an increasing trend, save for what happened in 2020, where banks across all over the world, not just Malaysia, are impacted by COVID uh, pandemic. But uh, rest assured that if things continue to improve, uh, surely enough, they'll able to actually slowly climb back to their slow and stable growth rate, right? And uh, just to also highlight some of the key um, information to, to take note. So even though uh, net profits is going up, but in terms of the total asset growth, it's actually growing at a much faster rate. And this is actually uh, contributed by the total uh, equity, shareholders' equity growth rate as well. So you can see from 37 um, million as of 2017, it has actually gone up to uh, 314 million, 315, right? So if your equity is high and uh, your profit grows at a slower rate, slowly your ROE trend will actually trend down and that shouldn't be something to be much afraid of, right? Now, of course, uh, other key infos to actually uh, laser zoom and focus on is actually on the uh, gross loan to the fund ratio. So uh, a huge portion or a healthy portion of it, the fund and also the equity on hand is actually being uh, generated out or, or being used as loan proceeds and uh, 
this is actually uh, a good sign that actually the bank is managing it at a very healthy ratio of around 88% to 90%, even though uh, it was a tough year as of 2020. And of course, uh, gross impact loan ratio even dropped, even though 2020 was a tough year for a lot of people. Uh, but still, apart from that, public banks still managed to actually squeeze down uh, 0.1% and improve it further, right? So other than that, uh, one key thing to also take note is the uh, capital adequacy, which is how adequately the bank has in terms of the capital to weather from, uh, you know, sell downs and even black swan events. So as of the latest March 20, 2021 figures, they are actually well uh, capitalized ahead from the uh, level or the so-called uh, target that is set by Basel III and also our Bank Negara Malaysia, which states that uh, you need to, need to have at least around 11 to 12% uh, as your total capital ratio. So of course, after going through the business model and also the figures, uh, a lot of people would be quite well reassured that um, public bank is a solid and defensive counter, uh, apart from being a very uh, predictable kind of dividend paymaster, right? But of course, valuation is also key. You want to buy good stocks even uh, at relatively cheaper price so that you can enjoy the upside and also the better dividend yield. So as of latest, public bank is currently trading at uh, 4 ringgit a share. This is actually uh, post split and post, I would say post bonus issue, right? Back then, uh, there was a bonus issue of four shares to every one existing share. So if you actually convert it back uh, before the bonus issue, uh, the current price is actually at uh, 20 ringgit per share. So of course, the highest it actually went uh, was close to uh, 25, 26 ringgit per share. So right now it is still around 20% uh, lesser than its uh, historical high. But uh, you can see a little bit of recovery already based on the, the share price that it actually uh, experienced during the March 2020 pandemic sell off. As of now, uh, price to earnings ratio is at 15%. Uh, 15 times PE ratio and also the dividend yield is at around 3%, right? Uh, so I think the thesis for public bank is actually how uh, happy are you with a defensive counter uh, and with the current valuation and also the dividend yield. For some people, they will want to see a bank that is growing at a faster rate. Hence, you might actually consider the uh, less... Uh, in terms of capital uh, management, a little bit less proactive and less defensive than public bank. But in terms of the growth prospect, could be at least higher than public bank were had. So I think it's a very 50-50 uh, side for this case. Uh, you have people who want stability and you also have people who want the growth uh, to be at a faster rate. But what about you? What do you think about public bank, Chun Beng? Uh, do you like it? being defensive or you want to have a bank that is more aggressive? Uh, of course, I think if you talk about the growth potential, uh, is, I mean, it's very challenging uh, compared to Maybank, who is very forefront in their digital innovation, uh, especially their recent move into this MAD app and also their user interface and so on. While public banks still uh, start at the old school kind, kind of technologies uh, from the user experience perspective. While on the other hand, another top bank in Malaysia, CMB, uh, they have the present across uh, Malaysia. I mean, in ASEAN uh, alone, they are having their footprint in did it, uh, Indonesia, Thailand, and so on. And of course, Touch and Go e-wallet is also one of the prospects under their portfolio. So if you talk about all this dig digital innovation, uh, Public Bank technically is a bit uh, fallen behind. Uh, but for stabilities, uh, they have proven that they are able to actually get hold to any type of back swan event. Uh, they are really good at that. And of course, I think during the pandemic, uh, they also got a lot of sound down and they also managed to recover quite fast. It's just after recover, it's quite hard to actually chase again their historical high anymore uh, uh, due to the fact that, I mean, a lot of investors didn't see the potential in it. Uh. So it, it's re it really down to whether you want to have stabilities or you want to have something more, um, 
I would say more exciting uh, uh, than probably you can look for the others bank or even the bank across Malaysia, for example, Singapore Bank and so on. Well, I think that you pretty much sum up the so-called sentiment. I believe that our viewers will also share the same uh, predicament. Uh, some would be uh, a little bit more preferable to a public bank's defensive uh, asset management, while some would be uh, actually saying that mm, in terms of growth, I think there are other banks out there who are growing at the more uh, exciting rate uh, compared to a uh, public bank, and they wouldn't mind to trade off a bit of the so-called uh, strict uh, capital management uh, in exchange for some growth uh, percentage and growth rate. But uh, what do you guys think, right? Uh, let us know in the comment section below. Uh, are you pro public bank Berhad or are you actually uh, a little bit more skeptical on their so-called scrutinized uh, way of handling its uh, asset? Let us know in the comment section below. And of course, if you do have other companies that you want us to cover, uh, just shoot it up in the comment section as well. Uh, we will take a look and we will definitely uh, prepare some kind of similar sharing as of today. But that's it for today. Uh, we will wish you the very best in uh, looking for your next uh, investment opportunity or uh, candidate to actually invest, even though times are uh, pretty much uncertain as of now. So take care and we'll see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.